Hello, everyone, and welcome to our overview of the Sophos MSP Connect Flex program. My name is Kyle Torres. I'm the Senior Channel Account Executive for the MSP Flex program. And what we're going to do today is we're just going to give you a brief overview of how our program works, how we like to summarize it, and show you a little bit about what that looks like. Sophos MSP, we like to summarize it in our three key things. And what we're going to look at is one vendor, one program, and one dashboard, and what we mean when we simplify and summarize those terms. Now, when we talk about one vendor, um, we are talking about that message around consolidation and being able to manage everything in what we call an adaptive cybersecurity ecosystem. Now, I know this slide, there's a lot going on. So what we'll do is I just want to break this down sort of layer by layer. We'll start at the bottom and I'll just give everyone a quick description of what the adaptive cybersecurity ecosystem or the ACE, what that actually is. So at the very bottom, underpinning everything, we have the data lake. So the data lake is that central repository for all Sophos event and alert data. And that's a very important, it plays a very important part in the ecosystem because that is where our different forms of threat intelligence come from. And that can be via artificial intelligence, scanning the alerts and the events in the data lake, Sophos Labs, which are our virus labs that we've had for decades. The Sophos Labs team are there looking at samples, you know, reporting and analyzing unseen samples to determine if they're malicious. And also our security operations team. So those threat hunters, threat analysts, incident response, they're all looking at things from that data lake. That threat intelligence is how we keep our products so powerful. And those products range from endpoint security solutions to network security, to cloud workloads, over to email. And then that black bar, second from the top, you can just see some examples of some different types of instances we can protect, whether they are PCs or laptops, mobile devices, servers, virtual machines, cloud containers, and cloud environments. And then at the top is what you actually see. So right up there at the top layer is the visible layer. It's the surface of the lake. Um, the surface of the ecosystem and what you would see. Now that can be via a full managed service like MDR, or it can be self-managed. Now, a lot of our partners watching this today are probably managed service providers. So you will most likely be quite hands-on with this environment where you can go in, you can manage those customer consoles and you'll get quite a little bit, uh, quite a bit of visibility. And then just pinning it together on the sides, we can see our open APIs and our third-party integrations. So the open API APIs are there to allow for a little bit of creativity when it comes towards scheduling your automation or setting up your automation. And then the third party integrations that can vary from our MDR integrations, which, which allow us to integrate with third party vendors or integrations with PSA and RMM tools or SIEM or SOAR providers. Now, the journey to become an MSP Flex partner is pretty straightforward. Um, the first off is that you meet a managed services business model. And the MSP Flex program, it was designed not just to offer monthly billing, but to offer a lot of functionalities tailored to managed service providers. Things like the ownership of the licensing, having the responsibility over support and provisioning, those types of key aspects that a managed service provider or an MSP would actually be using. So if you meet that managed services business model, absolutely invite you to sign up and fill out an application. So you can go to sophos.com slash MSP. If you're a new partner, you'll set up your Sophos ID. If you're an existing partner, it'll actually direct you to fill out the application through the partner portal where you can just augment your existing account. We have two certifications required for the MSP Flex program. One is the sales fundamentals. So that will just give you a really good all around view of the different Sophos products and services, as well as the MSP Connect exam, MSP01, which is all things Sophos MSP Connect, or MSP Flex. We also make sure that you have the distributor approval. So oftentimes when you sign the application, you'll be asked to nominate your preferred distributor. Part of our process is making sure that you have an active account set up with them. And once that is all done, you are ready to be set up as an MSP Flex partner. Now the training is all available on the hub. So when I say the hub, I mean the MSP hub in the partner portal. If you log into the partner portal, you can see right up at the top there, there's MSP and CSP and there's MSP hub and there's an option that says complete your MSP training. So you can actually get to that training through the hub or you can get to it through the training dropdown, which is right next to it, right at the top of that screen there. 
Once you're in the training, you'll actually see the different modules. And right there next to each other, you've got SC01 and MSP01. Um, now, if they're not next to each other, like in this screenshot, I wouldn't worry about it. They do have the ability to search for the modules. Um, if you're enrolled, they'll show up in your enrolled modules as opposed to available. But both of those modules will be there. And that's that SC01 Sales Fundamentals and MSP01 MSP Sales Consultant. Now, the MSP Hub also has a lot of other really good resources. So we are going to revisit the partner portal so we can take a look at some of these other resources that are on there. Um, but for the moment, let's go back onto the program itself and talk about how we do our licensing, what types of products are actually available. Because remember, we're talking about um, one vendor, one program, one dashboard. So looking at some of these products that are available, you'll see that we've got very good parity with the termed offerings. Um, previously, there were a lot of products. If anyone has, has been with the MSP program since its launch in 2016, you notice we didn't really have that much available. That has all changed. If you're joining us today, uh, we have quite a bit available. And that ranges from our user-based licenses, which are things like endpoint security. So that's your Intercept X Advanced, your XDR, your XDR with MDR essentials are complete. We have mobile protection, not just mobile advanced, but all levels are available through the MSP Flex program. That's Intercept X for mobile, standard, and advanced. We have device encryption, email protection, fish threat, and our zero trust network access, our ZTNA, is also available on a per user, per month basis through the Flex program. Now, we also have device licensing. So the devices we have, all of the firewall software subscriptions are available. So those are the standard protection, the Xtream, the Xtream with WAF and email, as well as the virtual appliances. Now, Sophos does not have hardware as a service, so when you're ready to buy a firewall, you would traditionally purchase the hardware upfront, and then you have the software subscriptions that can be monthly. If you're looking at a virtual firewall, virtual firewall as a service, you can have all of that monthly, the appliance as well as the subscription. The device reporting, so if you're interested in getting that enhanced device reporting, so it's additional storage and longer storage period, we have device reporting available on monthly, we have server protection. So all of those endpoint security licenses, Intercept X Advanced, XDR, MDR Complete, MDR Essentials, they also cross over to the servers. And lastly, our cloud optics, cloud environment licensing. So those are for your cloud security monitoring of those cloud specific environments. So these are the different products that we have. And you can see that we've grouped them on user, devices, device reporting, servers, and cloud. So the reason that we have these in groups goes on to how we do our billing. So I have an example here, and I'm going to mention two key phrases, and that is volume-based discounts with aggregate license calculation. Volume-based discounts is pretty straightforward. When we're talking about volume-based discounts, the more users you have or the more licenses you have, the cheaper it gets. With aggregate license calculation, we take your total volume based on the aggregate count across all of your customers, meaning you will never have different customers paying different prices for the same license. We take the total count. That's how we determine what your price band is. We call these, these different levels bands. And that's how we determine what that invoice is going to be. So in the example here, we have an MSP with 1,500 user licenses. Now, this doesn't have to be 1,500 Intercept X advanced licenses. This can be one giant 1,500 user customer, or these 1,500 licenses can be spread across 20 different customers. All we look at is the license type. It can be any combination of user licenses spread across any number of customers. That will give us our total, which puts us at the 1,000 to 4,999 price band for user licenses. And as a follow-on example, if this MSP decided to add a 10-user small business, that 10-user small business would still benefit from the 1,000 to 499 band, but their total count would not be 1,500. It would be 1,510. So we aggregate that all together. And you can see how that 
passes through to the firewall subscriptions, the server licensing, and the cloud optics. They all have those, those volume-based discounts, but we take the total count to determine that volume across the entire customer estate. So 33 servers, again, that can be 33 individual customers with one server each, or that can be one big customer with 33 servers. They can be 15 MDR with one customer, 15 Intercept X Advanced with another, that gives us a total of 30. So it can be any combination there. So just to reiterate, that's the volume-based discounts with aggregate license calculation. So the next thing we'll look at is the dashboard. So we mentioned one dashboard, um, and that is the Sophos Central Partner Dashboard. That partner dashboard or CPD or whatever you'd like to call that, um, that is where you manage all of your customers, your end users, your customers, they will never see the partner dashboard. That is for you, the partner alone. Now you can manage both types of customers, whether they are termed or monthly, you can still do both styles of licensing and you can manage both of those from this one dashboard. It also has a lot of other useful things like your global policy settings and templates. This is if you're not on a marketplace, this is where you'll create your new customers from. This is where you can change your licenses. This is also where you can convert existing trials and termed customers into monthly accounts yourself. And we're going to take a look at how that process actually works here in a moment. But the other pane of glass on the right there is the central admin. This is the individual console for each unique customer will have what we call an admin or a central admin. Now, as an MSP Flex partner, if your customer is monthly, you will automatically have full ownership and single sign-on access to this central admin to manage it for your customer. And if your customer does require access, we do have role-based access control on the customer level, also on the partner level. But if your customer does require, say, read-only access into their own account so that they can see their reports, but you don't want to run the risk of them changing any policies, then you can just set them up with something like read-only access into their own central admin. But let's go ahead um, and take a look at some of these processes. Now, I mentioned that conversion process the termed central admin to monthly, and that's the one we're going to look at now. Um, but in, on the community.sophos.com page, you can see Steve Weber, who's our um, MSP sales engineer for our global MSP team. He's put a few articles on here that are just really useful guides for the partners, how to manage the users, how to create new admins for you know, if, if you need some more for your own account or the, or the customer's account. But what we're going to look at now is how to convert a termed central admin account to a monthly account. So let's take a look at that. So we can see we are here in our partner dashboard. So we're in our Sofa Central partner dashboard. Uh, we've got dark mode turned on, and we want to convert a termed central account to monthly. So the first thing we're going to do is click on customers. So that's on the left-hand side. You'll see customers, licenses, manage customers usage. We're going to click on customers. Once we are on this customers page, this will actually give us a list of all of our customers. If they're monthly, if they're termed, if they're on a trial, we'll be able to see all of those from this list. And all we need to do is highlight the termed customer. Once you have that termed customer highlighted, there's a button at the top that says update billing. Once you click on update billing, you'll get a pop-up. You'll get a little infographic pop-up. Um, it does say check the box after reading to confirm that you're agreeing um, to forfeit remaining time on a termed license. I'd say always have a look at this pop-up because the biggest notification is that right there. Um, Sophos does not pro rata or credit any existing term times. We always recommend converting a termed license close to the expiry date. Because if you have six months of time remaining on that termed license before it expires and you convert it to monthly, you will be billed for the monthly usage at the soonest um, upcoming billing cycle. So it does give you a pop-up just to give you a reminder. Sometimes that may be absolutely fine, so it does give you a pop-up just to say that the following licenses have three months remaining. It will just confirm that with you. And once you tick the box and say yes, it will then just confirm the licenses. 
So if you need to update any licenses, if you're not making any changes, you can just untick the boxes. If they are using the licenses, I would say I would recommend to keep those boxes ticked because in this example, it's going to ask us about the endpoint and server, at which point it asks, do you want MDR complete or do you want, do you want to select a different product level? If we select MDR complete, we will have extended support automatically enabled. It doesn't mean you'll get charged for extended support every month. It just means that if an out-of-date operating system is detected, we will enable that extended support license. So once you've confirmed your options, you can click on next to continue again. It will then just ask you to verify that the selections are correct. So we can see our endpoint and server are going to be on MDR. We have some products enabled. Now, this doesn't mean that you will automatically be billed for them. We only bill you for what's actually being used. So this is a question that is that comes up quite often. So I just want to call, point out um, specifically the mobile advanced at the top there. That doesn't mean that it's automatically going to deploy mobile advanced licenses. It just means that if they have endpoints and servers and three months down the road, they say, um, your end user says, well, actually, um, can you do mobile device management for us as well? Oh, yes, of course, we can use Sophos Mobile. Mobile Advanced is the level um, that it will be at. So it's just letting you know um, you have access. So if it says enabled, it means you do have access to it. If it has the actual name, it just means that's what the license level will be if and when you decide to deploy it. So once that is all done, these license changes typically take a few minutes, but it can take up to four hours. We click save, and that will immediately convert that account into a monthly account. So now it will show up on the customer's list. It will still say that you're managing it because it's a monthly account, but it will actually now, like I said, it won't be termed anymore. It'll be a monthly account that we can see on the manage customer usage page. The last, late, last thing I wanted to do was just leave you with some good program resources. So we have these different MSP ways for MSP support and resources. We do have um, a support tech support phone number, or you can email msp.support at sophos.com. We also have our partner portal with the MSP hub, a lot of very good resources in there from um, webinars and enablement videos that have been previously recorded to updated data sheets and product information, as well as where you can get to our training and some shortcuts to some really good marketing resources as well. And we also have our MSP Global YouTube channel. So we have a lot of videos on there that is completely maintained by us, by the Sophos MSP Global team. Um, so we can go ahead and get these, this type of content, updated material out there for the partners and the public. The asset library in the partner portal is one that I feel does deserve its own slide. It's a very, very useful area. This is where your, your central repository for any collateral that you might need, whether that's marketing materials, PowerPoint presentations. We have PowerPoint presentations that are customer facing, ready to go for you to use as a partner. We have a lot of really good enablement resources set up here in the asset library. Things like email templates for our marketing campaigns, case studies, and we have these broken down by sector, by region, our competitive intelligence and our battle cards, there is, there's quite, quite a bit within that asset library. So just to wrap things up, I, last thing I wanted to do was give a few points of contact. So I hope you enjoyed um, this, this content. It should be just a nice, quick overview. We've got one program, one vendor, one dashboard. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to get in touch. I'll leave this slide up just for another few seconds while I close it out so you can go ahead and you know, take note of any of those contacts. Um, but I hope everyone viewing this, hope you have a good day. Thank you for attending and hope to speak to you soon.